So I told you guys I was gonna make a video about how to use these treadmill motors without having to use these motor boards. Why would you wanna do that? Well, say you got a treadmill from wherever, you get it home, you rip it apart, and you find out that the treadmill motor board is fried. You don't wanna shell out 120 bucks for a new one of these boards, or $100, whatever it may cost. And you don't wanna get a used one on eBay. There is an option. What you can use, well, what you're gonna start with, is one of these SCR motor controllers. I got this off eBay for $12. And the reason why this cost $12 was because I opted for the 10,000 watt type of board and I can use this with 220 volts. I wasn't sure what the application was gonna be after I'm done with making this video, so I decided to upsize this, as well as every other component in this video, I upsized it. It has the wired, wiring diagram right on the side. If, for those of you that aren't electronically inclined, I would suggest getting one with four connectors here, two input, two output, so that way it makes it just that much easier to connect. This is not designed to work with direct current motors, so we are gonna need to modify this to get it to work with our direct current treadmill motor. So if this isn't supposed to be used for direct current, then obviously it's gonna be used for alternating current. Um, this is triac based and what that means is that it's going to conduct current in both the positive and negative direction So we're going to need to correct that So there are also a couple other things that we're going to need to correct But first let's hook this up to an alternating current motor and see how well it doesn't work Okay, so here's how you wire this SCR motor controller if you're going to use it for alternating current Here's the wiring diagram these two wires are coming from the wall and your output is going to be here. So let's just screw this in. There's one of your outputs. Now we'll take that output and we'll connect it to one side of the plug. Like that. Now for the other output, we're going to hook this lead up to this right here and this is going to go to the other side of the plug. Now that's ready to use for alternating current. I'm going to flip the switch and we'll see how this works on my bandsaw, which would be a great use for this if it actually worked. But we'll get it started and we'll see what I mean. Okay, let's fire this up, see how it works. That's full speed. Now let's try to turn it down. Now this would be an ideal situation for this motor controller. If you were able to slow down the blade speed of the bandsaw, you'd be able to cut all sorts of materials. However, it's just not possible with this motor controller and this motor. Ideally, this would be used for a fan or dimming the light. And really, as it is out of the box from the manufacturer, that's really the best case scenario that you're gonna get. Luckily, that's not what we're gonna use this for. We're gonna use it to control one of the treadmill motors. So let's begin transforming this useless piece of junk into something that we can actually use for our application. Just to show that this SCR motor controller isn't gonna work with this treadmill motor before we modify it, I have it hooked up and we'll just go ahead and throw some power to the motor through the motor controller and see what happens. Whoa, see that smoke? Well, I kind of abandoned that test because we had some smoke coming out of the motor. So you saw that it didn't work with the treadmill motor and that's because it's still putting out alternating current. The reason being is this board is triac based and the triac will put out alternating current. It's not gonna rectify the alternating current. I'm not gonna go too much into how this board works. It's kind of outside the scope of this video. This video is more about modifying this board to make it work for your application and this application right now being direct current treadmill motors. If you guys are interested in seeing more about the electrical engineering aspect about how this board works, Big Clive has a really good video about that. I'll put a link in the description. If you're interested, go ahead and check that out. But since this board is putting out alternating current, what do we do to rectify that? That's right, folks, your old pal, the bridge rectifier. That's gonna turn the alternating current into direct current. That way we'll be able to control our motor with this motor board. This bridge rectifier is way oversized, just like this motor controller is. Uh, I can't remember exactly what the voltage is for this. 
so you can see the number on the rectifier. Let's go ahead, we'll hook up the rectifier and we'll see how this works. When hooking up one of these rectifiers, only two of these terminals are going to be marked. You'll have the positive marked on the direct current output and you'll have the alternating current marked. It's important to remember these two terminals are alternating current, they're diagonal. The positive and the negative terminal, again these are diagonal as well. So the way you hook this up, alternating current alternating current. Our AC is hooked up to the bridge rectifier now. Now we'll hook up the inputs to the treadmill motor to the rectifier. It doesn't matter which way you connect the alternating current because it's alternating current. The switch is from positive to negative, positive to negative. Doesn't matter. With the treadmill motor you can hook up either one of these terminals to the positive. So we'll just go ahead, we'll connect it this way. And that's going to make the motor spin one way. If you want to reverse direction of the motor, you just take these two terminals out and reverse them. Now that'll make the motor spin the other way. Let's take a look and we'll see how it runs. Uh -huh. The only thing we have left to do is to change out this potentiometer. This is a 470k potentiometer. It's too big to control this motor. What that means is once you turn this potentiometer up, you have to turn it almost all the way up to get the motor spinning. This flywheel is just threaded onto the shaft, so if you run the motor in the wrong direction, the flywheel unscrews itself. But back to the potentiometer. This is way oversized, so you don't get the amount of variability that you would want when you're trying to, you know, find the correct speed. It basically goes from on to full speed way too quickly, and you want to be able to dial this in. So the best case scenario would be that you want the motor to turn on right when you start turning the potentiometer, and you would want the motor to top out right as the potentiometer reaches its full limit. This obviously does not do that, so I'm going to have to try a couple different values of potentiometer to kind of get it dialed in. I'm probably not going to be able to get it perfect, but I'm going to be able to get it close enough. Okay, well it took a little bit of doing as I didn't have the right size potentiometer on hand. The largest one I had was 100k ohm. So I had to order it online and that took a few days, so that delayed the making of the video a little bit. I was able to attach it and it seems to be working. I desoldered the old one and then I resoldered the new one in. So now I just have to screw it back in and give it a test try. There's a lot more adjustability with this potentiometer than the last one. You have probably about maybe three quarters of a turn on this, on this knob to fine tune the motor adjustment, this being the slowest and that being the highest. So now we'll just clean this up a little bit, make it a bit more compact, and then we'll call it done. So I kind of cleaned this up a little bit the best I could. Um, I'm not exactly sure what project I'm going to be using this for, so I might modify the setup once I attach it to a project. I screwed the bridge rectifier to the heat sink of this board and I just kind of hooked everything up as neatly as I could. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but when you're using one of the motor controllers that come with the treadmill, you have to deal with what's called the soft start feature. Uh, what that is, when you cut power to the motor, you have to turn down the potentiometer all the way back to zero and then restart it again to try to get the same speed. So you're not going to be able to start the motor at the same speed. With this, it's not an issue. So you can see the motor spinning. I'm not going to touch this. I have a switch hooked up to the cord here. So I'll shut this off, cut power to the motor, it'll stop spinning, turn it back on, goes right back to the same speed the motor stopped at. One last thing that I need to mention is this inductor. 
Is this 100% necessary? No. But if you have one lying around from tearing apart a treadmill, then it's not going to hurt anything to throw it in line to the motor. It could quite possibly extend the life of some of your parts. And I do notice a little bit less sparking from the motor and it tends to run a little bit more smoothly. Again, it's completely up to you whether or not you want to use this. I have it, so I'm going to use it. Okay, let's talk cost now. I told you guys I was going to be able to build one of these motor controllers for $15. This one came in at just over 17 I believe it was around $17.5. Now, before you guys start leaving me angry comments, the reason being is that this is sized for 220 volts. Out of that $17.5, $12.5 was for this SCR motor controller from eBay. $2.5 for the bridge rectifier. This was actually a two pack, so it was two for $5. So $2.50 for the bridge rectifier. And another two for $5 deal with a potentiometer. So that comes in at $17.5. If you wanted to go cheaper and you only wanted to use this for 110, 120 volt electricity, then it's completely possible to build this for less than $15. You would just have to get the 4000 watt SCR motor controller and that shipped from China is I believe around $7.5. So you've got the seven and a half dollar SCR motor controller and then the five dollars for the potentiometer and the bridge rectifier. So that brings it in at around twelve and a half dollars, which is perfectly within the fifteen dollars that I gave you guys the original estimate for. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I'm pretty happy that this came out working. I know a lot of you guys have some of these treadmill motors that are lying around without the motor controllers to use them. So now is a cheap affordable way to make your treadmill motor variable speed. Thanks for watching the video and as always don't forget to hit that like button and if you could take a second to subscribe I'd really appreciate it. Alright, until next time.